When it comes to issues of a changing climate, I think we're faced with a wide variety of evidence today that things are changing. It's really remarkable when you get close to the, close to the source how much change is really happening to the Earth and to, therefore, to society. According to the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, climate change is causing widespread disruption in every region of the world. Human-caused climate change has contributed to the planet's warming above pre-industrial levels. Greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere are making significant climate impacts, affecting agriculture, forestry, fisheries, and aquaculture. In the next decade, global warming will jeopardize food security and drive up to 132 million more people into extreme poverty. It's clear that climate change endangers the well-being of people and the planet. Delayed action risks triggering impacts of climate change so catastrophic that our world will become unrecognizable. At the same time, demand for digital services is increasing in business and our daily lives. From 2019 to 2022, global internet traffic doubled, and that requires more energy. Energy-related CO2 emissions grew to 36.8 gigatons in 2022, a record high. We're all seeing an increase in our digital demand from streaming content to video conferences. The amount of data that we all consume on a daily basis is going up. And it takes energy to move that data around the world at amazing speeds. So how do we balance this growth in digital demand with the need to make sure we have low carbon energy solutions in the future. Technology is essential to everyday life. It drives the economy, health, communications, safety, security. Our economic development are all housed in data centers. So even as we make that cloud more accessible, we have to strive to reduce its environmental impact. How can we green the energy grid even as our demand for energy grows? In 2022, renewable energy sources generated about 22% of all U.S. electricity, and renewable energy demand and development are growing. Today, wind is the largest source of renewable energy, followed by hydropower and solar energy. There is growing development of geothermal energy as well. While many governments work toward solutions, the biggest opportunity for change in renewable energy development lies in the business sector. Business is a huge influence today on the world. And even writers like Paul Hawkins uh, said that, paraphrasing, only business has the scale and the speed and the resources to make a big enough difference fast enough to matter. And I think that's true. If business has been part of the problem, then certainly business has the opportunity to be part of the solution. I think that climate change is one of the greatest challenges we face as humanity, and the private sector has a huge role to play in helping the world solve this problem. And I'm excited about being part of a team that's working on this every day to solve it not only for Google, but for everybody. We've had decades of environmental degradation that's been led to by unsustainable practices toward our planet. And we all must do our part to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. Let's think about the consequences of a change in climate so we can insulate our customers and ourselves from possible impacts. Thinking about ways in which we could improve our business by reducing our climate impact is the other part of the equation. When I think about impacts and where I fit in or where any of us fit in as individuals, I kind of think in a bullseye with three rings. The center of the ring is where I fit in, where I personally have an impact. Do I bike to work? Do I recycle at home? Sure, that might sound trivial to some folks, but it's what I can control the most. It's what I have the most impact on. And sure, it hasn't got the scale of a global business, but it's what I can control. It's in the center of the bullseye. The next circle out is how we behave as business professionals whether you're an individual contributor or a business decision maker or a business executive making large decisions, we have opportunities to think differently about the power of business to be part of the solution, 
So we have a lot of opportunity to make business decisions, often million dollar, billion dollar decisions that could have better outcomes. And then the third circle, the outer ring, is how can we use the power of our entire business to lead others? How can we be an example or engage with our supply chain, with partners, with our communities, with others in business to be able to make an even bigger systemic change? In fact, many organizations are doing just that. Companies and organizations around the world are setting clear targets to use carbon-free energy to combat climate change. They represent a growing portion of the global digital economy that relies on vast amounts of energy. According to the RE100 Climate Group, the Global Corporate Renewable Energy Initiative, bringing together hundreds of businesses committed to 100% renewable electricity, business demand for renewables today is greater than the total energy demand of major G7 economies. We're still a long way from a decarbonized grid but organizations working together will help accelerate progress. One group that's using the power of business for good collectively is the Clean Energy Buyers Association, a community of more than 400 companies, including more than 150 buyers of energy. We're trying to catalyze a greener grid for all as soon as we possibly can and help that energy transition. And as we know, many companies are setting goals and targets to do the same thing for their own consumption, their own electricity requirements. And by definition, renewable energy is not any of their core skills. And so we really want to help them learn and help them progress and help them accelerate to meet their goals and targets quicker or at least on time. We saw the tech sector was, was a strong proponent and started moving to this kind of early, but they weren't alone. So also automotive and retail and apparel and financial sectors have really helped to proliferate this and make these transactions kind of workable and a known quantity for all. There are many examples of companies joining together to use their power for good, if you will. And many of them are the tech companies who have big carbon footprints in the first place. Companies like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Salesforce, have all been part of a movement to think about using our purchasing power for energy in ways that help change the market space. It's very important for companies and organizations to work together. This is a problem that is so difficult that we all can't solve it on our own. We have to work collectively as a community. And that's actually one of the things that's excited us the most is not just working at this for ourselves, but working with other companies and other organizations. We found that we've been able to get much more momentum in the markets where we operate and in the industry as a whole. One thing we found is that Advancing public policy is incredibly important to solving these challenges. When Google set our goal to reach 24-7 carbon-free energy, it wasn't just about Google, it was about how can we get electricity grids around the world to carbon-free as fast as possible. And so it's not just about the collective weight of companies who are buying clean energy. We need to work hand-in-hand -hand with policymakers around the world to make sure that we're putting policies in place that help us get the grids to carbon-free as fast as we can. What we found is that we can drive a much greater transformation by working collectively as companies and buyers. It's one thing for one buyer to ask for carbon-free energy, but it's another thing for many thousands of buyers to ask for carbon-free energy. And that's the opportunity that's before us now. Microsoft works toward clean energy and sustainability through collaboration. Key to sustainability are both energy efficiency and utilizing clean energy. We work with grid operators, for instance, to build on IoT or AI solutions to help execute efficiencies on their grids. We build technologies and work with partners and collaborators at our data centers. We also work on procurement of clean energy. So to meet Microsoft's ambitious sustainability targets, we procure 100% renewable energy by 2025. We do this through collaboration, and this drives clean energy onto the grid, over 13 gigawatts to date. I've been in the energy business for over 30 years. I have never seen a space evolve as rapidly as the changes that we've seen happen in renewable energy over the past several years, and in particular over the last 18 to 24 months. We are absolutely seeing demand for sustainable energy. 
Regardless of what's going on globally or politically, our customers have been asking for sustainable solutions for a while. Uh, in fact, they're making commitments to 100% renewables. Uh, they're looking for ways to be more sustainable the whole time. It started with the largest of companies, but it's come down market. Everybody, large and small, wants to find a way to provide or to procure renewable energy for their needs. The demand is limitless. And the good news is, is that the community involved around developing those projects, we're ready to be there. What started with the purchasing of clean energy offsets has moved into a drive toward 24-7 clean energy. 24-7 is a new sustainability pledge that's really being driven by a lot of the corporate sector that is saying we're going to move away from the current model of purchasing renewable energy credits that can really come from anywhere. What 24-7 looks to do is really to take temporal and location-based information into account. So rather than being a company that's just going to purchase Texas wind wrecks and settle them on behalf of load or consumption in New York or California, it's going to say that I want to purchase renewable energy every hour in the same grid where I'm actually consuming that energy. There's an element here of farm to table electrons, if you will, right? That you're not shipping it out from somewhere that's completely distant away from where you're actually sitting at the table, but that there is a localization of that energy. Furthermore, it's about the deliverability, so that it's not just about the consumption, but that you're actually able to show that it's delivering to the specific zone or grid where I'm ultimately consuming that same energy. The reason that Google set a goal to reach 24-7 carbon-free energy is that we felt that we were at the stage in our own decarbonization journey that it was time to move that last and final step, decarbonization of our electricity consumption every hour of every day at every location. And that's what 24-7 carbon-free energy is all about. We're going to find ways to match every hour of every location with carbon-free energy all the time by 2030. Since Google set our 24-7 carbon-free energy goal, we've been very encouraged by the uptake that we've been seeing across the marketplace. We've seen cities like the city of Des Moines, for example, set carbon-free energy goals for 24-7. We've seen other companies like Iron Mountain set 24-7 goals. We've even seen the federal government, which is the world's largest electricity purchaser, set a 24-7 goal for itself. Renewable energy isn't just about the environmental benefits by decoupling our energy cost from the cost of fossil fuels, we're able to create long-term lower costs of energy. It's true today that the lowest cost energy generation comes from renewables. The more that we can match every hour of every day with generation from renewables, the more that we're able to create a long-term sustainable energy future. To actually buy renewable power involves quite an ecosystem of providers that come together to identify a project, fund it, develop it, build it, generate power, put it onto the grid, and ultimately deliver it to us as a buyer. As the global need for clean energy increases, past practices of centralized generation are shifting to become more distributed. Customers are seeking different solutions from their energy providers. Renewable project owners and developers are working hard to meet the growing demand from companies seeking to achieve their carbon reduction goals. We'll oftentimes start with our local utility provider and we'll see what they can do to help us meet our renewable energy goals. And oftentimes they're in the best position to go out and develop the new projects that will ultimately help us hit our 24-7 carbon free energy goal. So, Utilities play an important role in the whole supply chain of getting renewable power from the generation asset to a consumer like us, which we then pass through to our clients. We as an energy company and as an industry take those risks, take that complexity and make it easier for the business customer. Taking these complex tasks or complex issues inside of energy and turning them into things that are simple so the business customer can focus on their business. There's a common belief that renewable energy is more expensive than traditional energy, that customers have to make a choice between choosing sustainable and choosing cost competitive. That's just not true. In competitive markets, renewable energy is actually cheaper in a lot of cases than market prices for power. You don't have to choose between being economic and being cost competitive. 
with being environmentally sound and being sustainable. You can have both, and that's something that's very exciting. Depending on a company's location, though, renewable energy isn't quite as easy to source. Buyers may need help from an expert or consultant to find a renewable energy solution. If we're going to transform the electric grid, it's going to be driven by demand. The easiest way to drive demand is to make it easy for people to buy. So as market participants, it's our job to use the tools available to us to create better solutions that meet the needs of the customer rather than trying to force the needs of the industry onto the customer for the customer to adapt. I think that's what's coming in the future. More flexible development models, more flexible contract terms, better technology to support and report what it is that you're doing with renewable energy. All of these are coming over the course of the next couple of three years. A company's energy needs go beyond just their own power usage. Organizations need to look at the carbon footprint of their own supply chain. Working with supply chain partners is a fantastic opportunity for companies to help increase their impact in the world and help proliferate their own knowledge, their own learnings and share best practices that they have gone through to procure renewable energy for their own operations they can share and work with their supply chain partners to help proliferate decarbonization down their supply chain, but then also across the world and in other businesses. One key component of an organization's supply chain is their data storage. Almost every company or organization creates data. Data that's housed in data centers. Data centers sit at the intersection of commerce and energy, keeping clients' critical IT equipment powered and secure. The data center industry is a huge consumer of energy and represents a large portion of a company's energy footprint. It's not commonly known that the energy inside a data center is actually the energy consumed by a whole number of clients who are using that space to power their IT equipment. It's not really our power, it's our client's power. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we provide them with the power that they would choose to buy on their own in support of their own corporate goals for renewable power use. While this energy demand is concerning, it also creates an opportunity. Data centers provide a unique opportunity to support grid decarbonization by leveraging their scale and innovation. Data centers who are committed to carbon-free energy play an important role in helping companies achieve their own goals for reducing emissions by supplying their customers with carbon-free energy and the documentation they need to prove it. As a data center and a very large energy buyer, we're able to go out to the marketplace and buy on a much bigger scale. And that enables us better access to really innovative, renewable solutions that are making a meaningful impact. Our ability to take this large volume and send the demand signal that it needs to be renewable is helping to promote the development of new renewable energy projects. From data center solutions to the rest of the supply chain, organizations are working to meet their sustainability goals. While larger organizations have been working on this challenge for years, others are just starting their journey towards green energy solutions. So for companies who are looking to get started in sourcing green energy, we certainly encourage you to do so. There are a number of ways to get involved. One, you can work with a company like Google who's providing tools and resources for other companies to source green power. Or you can work with organizations like the Clean Energy Buyers Association or the Resource Platform that have come together to offer companies best practices and tools for sourcing green energy. We all have a part to play to decarbonize through our everyday lives, through embodying the change that we wanna see in the world. But you could say, that's easy for Microsoft, one of the biggest companies in the world. What about me? What about my business? What can I do? How can I even get started? And for those people, for individuals, for small businesses, I would encourage them to look at ways to clean up their energy use, to reduce carbon emissions, through procuring clean energy directly, either on site or through their utility, and looking for ways to partner to mitigate environmental impact. We can all do more with others than we can do on our own.
The first piece of advice that I would give is start somewhere, make a commitment, put a commitment out there. I will say that the way that you actually execute on those commitments is only gonna get easier. The second thing I'd say is truly put purpose and focus on proving that commitment, on the granularity of the information, that this isn't just about the glossy sustainability report that goes on the conference boardroom, but this is about proving to all the stakeholders that truly care about it, that you're doing your part. So the exciting thing is, we're just getting started. The best is yet to come. We're gonna see tremendous transformation in the ways that companies operate in the coming years. And as the technology is evolving, we're gonna see much more opportunity to get to sustainability faster and more broadly than we ever thought we could. When I look into the future, I'm excited about what I see. I work with a whole bunch of professionals that are extremely diligent and excited to address the changes and the problems that we deal with every day around sustainability and climate change. I'm excited because I work with customers across the business community who are looking for ways to go down a sustainable energy path. When I think about what's ahead for, for us collectively in the renewable energy space, it's absolutely a thrilling and exciting prospect of what's coming. I believe that we're going to see more flexible development models. I believe that we're going to see better options for end users than they have today to create more of an impact and be able to target that impact. If there's one thing that we've learned, there is no playbook for this. It used to be the analogy was, we're building the plane while we're flying it. But planes have been flying since the early 1900s. I think it might be time for a new analogy. We are building the backbone of the technology that could innovate our way out of this climate crisis. The data transparency, the analytics, the innovation, even the designs for more efficient airplanes, they all live on the cloud. Do we need to green the grid that fuels that cloud? Yes. Can we do it? Yes. We're building that playbook right now and every person should answer that one ad. Every leader, every innovator, every customer, every supplier should use the resources at their disposal, should use technology to look for ways to innovate around the biggest problems of our time and have a positive impact on the planet. You know, as I look into the future, I have such optimism around the human ingenuity. All we need to do is give ourselves permission to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And we can do amazing things. We're already seeing it. Businesses across the spectrum are having the opportunity to make a difference in new ways. And we're showing that it can be done. I think that there's no end to the creativity that people are gonna to bring to the opportunity to use the scale and the speed and the resources of industry to be part of the solution to some of the world's biggest social and environmental challenges.